I'm Stephanie Van Paris. I'm with the Oakhurst Community Garden Indicator. Um, and I just wanted to start off by saying this. My son is nine, and I said to him, so why don't you want to eat school lunches? And he said, well, everybody who eats a school lunch gets in trouble <laughs> in class. So I thought, OK. <laughs> but my question is, um, you know, the school board wants to see better food for their children. The administration wants to see better food for their children. But the feedback that we get is it costs too much. And in it's a year true. when they're, you know, trying to save the teachers' positions and, you know, seeing if they're going to cut Spanish and, and stuff, how do you approach that? Because, you know, the folks that are pushing for it are going, well, there's got to be a way to make this work. And you've already given several ideas. But both of y'all have experience in, you know, in Philly and, and in Maryland and seen other examples. How does one convince the administration or even actually the nutrition director mm -hmm. of your school system that it's not going to break the bank? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let Tony talk mostly, but I, I know in Philly, uh, we went to talk to the head of food services in Philadelphia about doing farm to school pro in, in Philadelphia, and um, he almost laughed us out the door, you know. Um, what we ended up doing was uh, is uh, initially trying to work around the system <laughs> a little bit. So honestly, our first entree into the city of Philadelphia was in five charter schools, where it's a little looser, so they have a little more autonomy. Uh, we found some pretty inspired folks running those schools. But I'm really happy to say that the, now the head of the school district of Philadelphia Food Services saw what happened. We took him out to those five, there are five high schools, right? And actually one of the high schools was voted most violent high school in Philadelphia last year or something like that. These aren't, these aren't like sweet places necessarily, but the kids love the food. And we didn't do any marketing either, or education actually. We just put it out there. You know, you put out the basket of apples and everybody, it was amazing how popular. By the, by the last lunch, all the food was gone. And, um, when we were able to demonstrate some success on a small level, then now uh, we're hoping to expand it to 20 schools this year. So um, it, it's cheaper to serve your children better local food, all right? So, and that's also a big myth, all right? Buying fully processed food, you pay somebody to do all that work, all right? It is the single most expensive way to feed your children, all right? So, um, you know, chicken are, you know, 79 cents a pound, all right? Uh, chicken nuggets are about $5 a pound, all right? You do the math, you know? Um, so w what we did, uh, starting with produce, was, um, so I go to my local farmer, right? And my deal with my farmer is this, all right? He goes to the tree, picks every piece of fruit off the tree. I don't need special stickers, all right? Uh, big fruit, little fruit, I got big kids, I got little kids. Put it in a wooden field crate. The wooden field crate goes from his farm to my warehouse, to my warehouse, from my warehouse to my cafeterias. I wash it, I serve it, I take the wooden crate back to my warehouse. When he drops off the next load of fruit, he backhauls the wooden crate out to the field. And I can buy Maryland apples, as an example, just apples, all right? for $8.50 a case, but I get a rebate of $3.50 when I return the crate. So it's a net cost of $5. Or I could buy DOD apples from Washington that travel 2,200 miles to get to my door for $56 a case. What do you suppose? It's like almost 10 times the amount. You know, it, it, it's, you know this makes sense to do it this way. Peaches, it's the same way. I, I, I can buy Maryland peaches for eight cents a piece. Georgia has great peaches. You know, uh, oh, yeah. By the way, you guys grow some peaches around here, right? You know? um, but you start with something. You begin with something. And you all collectively decide, this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. My apple story started in New Hampshire. That's how I got involved in Farms of School. Driving down the road, I'm screaming at my produce guy and kept dropping <clears> the cell service. And I pulled off to the side of the road, and I'm parked in the middle of an apple orchard. I got out of the car and I walked up the road and there's this woman sorting apples, Peg McLeod from the uh, Norway Hill Farms in Hancock, New Hampshire. And she had this small pile of these big apples and this giant pile of these palm-sized apples. And I asked her about the apples and she said, well, the big apples are a good commercial apple. We sell them on the farm stand. We do pretty well with them. And the little apples, we just crush and make them into cider and then it's pig food. And then sort of the light went off, and it's like little apples, little hands, right? So what if I purchased every apple that you could produce on this farm and used it in the school system? Um, and it was a really profound moment. I, 
I hadn't realized that um, her husband was kind of in the final stages of Alzheimer's disease at the time. And this family farm was about to become development uh, because uh, the land is usually worth more money in houses than it is in farms. And, and because of this relationship that we could forge with the apples, you know, it stayed a farm, you know, and it still produces apples for the Conval School District. And it was pretty easy. And I called my colleagues around the state and said, you have orchards in your town. Why aren't you buying them from there? And we collectively started just buying apples in New Hampshire. And within eight months, we had New Hampshire apples in every school. And then we thought, wow, we all buy milk. We should be talking about that. You're paying 11 cents, and you're paying 16 cents. Now we all pay the same. Now, you know, we're a big dog together, you know? But we have to leverage that purchasing power.